Hey, everyone. What's up? So uh, I figured I'd start by addressing the elephant in the room. I'm not your average Brooks School senior. I've only been here for two years. I came in the fall of 2019 as a new junior. That year, Brooks had only five new juniors. I obviously was one of them. Now, people coming in as juniors isn't really out of the ordinary for a school like Brooks. It's like kind of common amongst prep schools in New England for kids to only spend their final two years there, but I wouldn't classify these last two years as ordinary or common. Due to COVID shutdowns, when I graduate, I will have only been on campus for a grand total of 341 days. That's not even a full calendar year. To put that in perspective, a typical student who spends four years at Brooks will have been on campus for roughly 910 days. Even in non-COVID times, a student who comes in as a new junior will have been on campus for roughly 455 days. So since I haven't been here that long, I might not have the same, op the same mind opening perspective that some of you in the audience and at home have about this school. But I feel like I've learned a thing or two in the last couple years that I've been here. Now I should preface this by saying, the boarding school world is not new to me. I spent 12 years of my life just down the road on the Phillips Academy campus. I grew up eating dining hall food, walking the halls of the dorms and going to under the lights football games. But it wasn't until I came back to Brooks that I started to realize the value of this wonderful experience. And I'm not talking about the academics like Mr. Nam's math class. Because let's face it, 10, 20, 30 years from now, no one is gonna remember how to factor a polynomial or the exact process of mitosis. What each and every one of us takes away from Brooks is so much more than that. So Brooks has this mission statement. They aim to provide the most meaningful educational experience of our lives. I've heard this a lot, but it wasn't until I actually sat down to write this speech that I started to understand what it really meant. When I first heard it, I thought, okay, Brooks probably has a very rigorous academic program, which it does, but so do thousands of other schools in this country. Because let's face it, taking AP classes doesn't make any of us that special. Staying up late, working on that assignment, complaining that it's too much work is not a unique high school experience. We could have taken AP classes and AP tests anywhere. At every high school in America, students are procrastinating and then complaining about having too much work. I didn't make the sacrifice to come to Brooks for that reason. I was already doing all of that in my hometown. But at the end of the day, each and every one of us did make the sacrifice to spend our time and money on a Brooks school education. And I would like to think it wasn't just for that little piece of paper that we get at the end of our four years here. Because every year, 3.7 million Americans graduate high school, 400,000 of which are from private schools alone. We could have gotten a diploma anywhere, but you and I both chose to get a Brooks school diploma. Why did we make that choice? Now, I'm sure if I asked all 365 of you, I would get 365 different answers. But one thing is for sure, we all decided to come here and make our own sacrifices for something that we think is important. Before we can answer exactly what that is, we might need to back up for a second. We live in a different world than our parents' generation. It's not a secret, but we've been coddled. We grew up with our crust cut off, participation trophies for everybody, and unranked class GPAs. We live in a world where we are meant to believe that we are special, that we are unique, and that we are important. And now, with, while this is true to an extent, this narcissism has let our generation feeling unsatisfied when things don't go our way and unprepared for the nasty world ahead of us. So, while many of us refer to Brooks as a bubble, it was actually an eye-opening place for me, and I would assume all of you as well. Brooks was the first place that I realized I wasn't special. I wasn't unique, and I wasn't that important. It was my first time living away from home, my first time having to communicate with teachers directly. It was my first time that I was truly held accountable for what I did. I no longer had mommy and daddy watching over me, making sure I didn't screw up. Now, all of this isn't to say that Brooks doesn't have a wonderful support net, because they do. But at the end of the day, it kind of feels like you're on your own a lot of the time. When I came to Brooks, I was challenged. Of course, the classes were hard, but what was way more difficult was learning to think critically manage my own time, and take control of my own life. It was up to me to get to class on time. Mom and dad weren't driving me anymore. It was up to me to get my homework done, and it was up to me to make, to make sure I was paying attention when I finally did make it to class. One of the most important lessons that I learned at Brooks was failure. Failure is a word that we don't hear too much of anymore. Like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty hard to fail growing up when your PB&Js have the crust cut off and you get a participation trophy without ever scoring a goal. But at Brooks, we all failed. It's a little cliche, but failure is a very important part of life. At Brooks, 
I failed in almost every aspect of my life at least once. I failed on the athletic field. I failed in the classroom. I failed at time management, and I failed at growing up. Now, I wish I could say that I do all these things perfectly now, but I don't. I will continue to procrastinate in college. I will continue to bomb tests, and my, my, my elementary school athletic dreams will never be realized. But what I have learned at Brooks is how to deal with that failure and turn it into a success. As I mentioned before, Brooks has a great safety net to catch you when you fall and help you to your feet. But let's not let that distract us from the fact that Brooks was the thing that knocked us all over to begin with. <laughs> but I'm kind of glad it did. <laughs> In the process of knocking us over, Brooks taught us all a lesson that we aren't special. We are not above it all. Brooks taught us not only how to get knocked over, but how to get back up. Because going forward into this mean and nasty world, we will all continue to fail. We no longer get participation trophies just for showing up. But when Brooks knocked us over, it helped us get back up, and it's showing us the ways in which we can do it on our own. Brooks helped me grow into the person that I am today. I am now a more resilient person. I'm a person who at least sort of knows how to deal with failure. I am not perfect, and I still have a long, long way to go. But without Brooks, who knows where I'd be right now? So thank you to the Brooks community. Thank you for knocking me over. Thank you for helping me back up. And thank you for providing me with the most meaningful educational experience of my life.